All right, guys, so this is a bit of a weird video uh, for me to make. Uh, and it's not something that like I've shared with a lot of people, you know, so so putting it out there on YouTube, um, it's a little bit hard for me, to be honest. And, and I just wanna share it with you guys, you know, my, my biggest insecurities, you know, in my own life, because, you know, a lot of people, they have insecurities and like, we don't wanna talk about them and, or you're just embarrassed about them or whatever it may be. Um, I kind of want to start a trend where it's okay to really, you know, voice your insecurities and just accept them and be okay with them, you know, and move on from them. Okay. So I'm going to get into my insecurities now, my top three insecurities uh, that I've had in my life. And I'll talk briefly about them and just let you guys know, you know, what's going on. So the number one thing, some of you guys be like, well, what is like, what could be your insecurity with that? And I, I, I would be just as confused as you guys are, okay? So the number one thing is my eyebrows, okay? And this is something I've been insecure about since I was young. And the reason being, I had these big, fluffy, like Armenian eyebrows. I remember, I remember very clearly, okay? I'm gonna tell you uh, like the whole backstory behind this, okay? So I had these big fluffy, like Armenian eyebrows, crazy, okay, huge, you know? And I remember when I was younger, I wanna say, I don't remember exactly how old I was. I wanna say when I was like 12, let's call it, I don't know. When I was like 12 years old, um, some kids at school just made fun of my eyebrows, like, wow, they're so big and fluffy. And I had like a uni brow and everything. It was just like everywhere. You know, uh, and so they made fun of me. And I remember I went home and I started, you know, plucking my eyebrows. I started plucking everywhere, top, sides, bottom, all angles, just everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Okay. And it became like an addiction for me. This is, this is one of the things I left out in my, um, uh, five things I've been addicted to uh, video. Got some, uh, <laughs> I got some, uh, some marker on my hand. Um, yeah. This is one of the things I left out of my five things I've been addicted to video, my top five addictions, but it should definitely be in there because it was a very big addiction for me in my life. And uh, I'm gonna explain what happened with this. So it's funny because when I was younger, I had very bad eyesight as well. Um, so right now I wear contacts. I'm, I'm negative 3.75 in my right eye and negative 3.5 in my left eye. So I, I don't have good you know, eyesight. So I kind of just was like plucking without really seeing much. And I never got glasses or contacts when I was younger either. So I was just kind of like, just, just, just firing it all off. And I got to a point where I was just addicted to plucking my eyebrows. I just, I just loved doing it. I loved, um, I loved the feeling of it. Just like pulling the hairs out. It was just like, it was just, it just felt good. And at that time I thought it looked good too, as compared to my big fluffy, you know, original natural eyebrows. So I started just firing them off, just, just, just going crazy, okay? And I started plucking them all off and to the point where it was very noticeable um, to everyone, you know, that was around me. Uh, my parents, you know, obviously my brother, like every, everyone, my cousins, they would all comment and be like, dude, like, what are you doing? You know, and at that time I was like, I, I was, there was two things. I was too addicted to plucking my eyebrows because I loved doing it. And then secondly, I didn't really see what they were talking about because I didn't have good eyesight. And I just, I never, I, I, I refused to get glasses for whatever reason, I just didn't want to get them. And I always had bad eyesight, you know, growing up. And so I, I didn't really see exactly what they were referring to. I was like, yeah, they look fine to me. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so this went on for a while. I want to say like between the ages of like, I'm guessing here, like, I don't know exactly, uh, between maybe like 13 and like 20, let's say, okay? Uh, this is what happened. I plucked my eyebrows like basically every day. Like anytime I saw a hair, it was just it felt so good to just you know just take it off. It was just it was just magical. Um, so I liked doing it, and so I did it between like thirteen and twenty, and then I got to a point where um, I guess I got contact at some point, uh, and then also I was at a uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I literally remember it like it was yesterday. I want to tell you guys a full story so you guys grasp it. I was living in Florida. I must have been like I must have been like twenty or twenty-one at this time. Okay, uh, I was living in Florida, 
And I remember I was standing on a line to go in a club. And this girl turns around to ask me a question. Like she was on the line too. And she was just like shocked. As soon as she turned around, she was like, almost like she saw like a zombie or something. It was crazy, like nothing I've ever seen. And it really had an emotional impact on me because I stopped plugging my eyebrows after this. So she turned around, she gave me this look, like she was like, and she was like an older woman. She must've been like, I guess like, maybe even like 40 or something. And I was like 21, she turned around and she's like, and she was like, sweetie, you're such a handsome guy. You really need to stop doing that to your eyebrows. And this is something I never heard. I only heard from, you know, my parents or, or from people around me. I've never had a complete stranger, you know, tell me something like that. So it kind of, it kind of hit me in a certain way where I was just like, wow, like she just like, this is weird, you know? Um, because before that, I always thought my mom would like, tell people to tell me like, oh, tell him his eyebrows are not good. So he stops doing them, you know? Uh, I always like thought my mom was scheming and I was like, my mom couldn't have contacted this girl. I'm in Florida uh, online to go into a club and some, some, some poor year old woman is telling me like, just, you know, randomly. So that hit me pretty hard. And I was like, after that, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna, I, I'm gonna stop this addiction. Like, even though it was so hard, I, I just, I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to, it just feels so good. Like for, for anybody who's picked up a pair of tweezers and like plucked out hairs, it's, just, it's an amazing feeling. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to, uh, after that, I stopped plucking my eyebrows, but there was a big problem already at this point is that I plucked my eyebrows to the point where a lot of it never came back. Okay. So it just, when you pluck it like every single day, basically for, for that many years, seven, eight years, you're going to lose some of the hairs permanently. You pull them out from the roots. Um, so I started Googling, like, what can I do about this? Um, and there's not really much. I mean, once the hair is gone, it's gone. So basically here I am like sitting there with like half eyebrows, like just like half missing. Uh, and you're looking at them now, you're like, oh, they're fine, Jack. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but they were basically half missing, like, like, or even like two thirds missing. Like it was just like patchy and like the shape was off and like everything was just not like it was it looked really weird when they were fully grown back like it just they never came back um so basically i had to pencil them in for like 10 years um after that between like 21 and like 32 i had to pencil them in because otherwise i would look like uh, a freak like if they were just this is missing you know because i i i just messed with them too much, you know? So they were just missing. Uh, up until I was 32, I finally realized, I was like, wait a second. I started doing some research. I was like, I don't want to pencil these things anymore. It's just, it's just annoying, you know? So, so I got eyebrow transplant surgery because of this insecurity and what it led me to and plucking these eyebrows. So I had to get eyebrow transplant surgery, which I got about, I want to say, um, almost a year ago at this point, like nine, 10 months ago. And so basically they take hairs from the back of your head and put them on your eyebrows. So, um, so this is, I just wanted to just share, you know, my entire story with that journey. And I might have a separate video just on that because uh, I know like this is not gonna relate at all, probably to some of the people watching this channel, but I think it's, it's just, you know, you guys be curious to, to, to learn a little bit about things that I'm insecure about and then like compare it to things you're insecure about and be like, okay, you know, Jack has insecurities too. You know, I'm not just this, you know, this perfect guy that um, is just always happy and always positive all the time. There are things that I've been insecure about in my life and, and that's what I wanna share, you know, in this video here. Uh, second thing is sweaty palms. So my palms have been sweating crazy since I was young, like to the point of like, you know, when I'm taking a test in school, I would I, like, I, I would be taking the test and my palms would be sweating so much the entire paper would be soaking wet. Or when you give somebody a handshake, it seems like I, I put my hand in like, you know, I just literally wash my entire hand and I give them a handshake. And this is something I was insecure about when I was younger a lot because it's just weird when you first meet somebody, you give them a handshake. I was always just like hesitant 
to give people handshakes because I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to come up and like them to talk about my sweaty palms because they're drenched in sweat all the way through, just drenched. And it's not only my palms, it's, it's the bottom of my feet as well. They were just completely drenched, you know, and it was just tough because they were, they were like, when I say sweating, I mean like, I don't mean normal sweating. I mean like to the point of like, if you touch it, it's like, it's like you're touching like this slimy, like crazy sweaty kind of thing, you know? It's like an interesting, you're like, oh, what, what the hell is that? You know, it's like a very weird, like, whoa, like what the hell is that kind of thing, you know? And so they were sweating profusely and I finally figured out what the issue was. Um, I don't know exactly how to put it into words. I'm gonna make a separate video about this. And there's a, there's a thing, there's a, a machine, and I'm looking at it right now, actually, it's over there in my corner. It's called the Hildrix uh, PSP 1000. And what it does is like, I put my hands into this machine like every single day. It's like, you put it down and, and my feet as well. And you just have to have your hands there for like 15 minutes, um, you know, three or four days per week sometimes five days per week, whatever it may be. And it kind of, um, it just stops the sweating. It just literally stops it. And it was like one of the most life-changing things that I've ever you know, experienced. When I bought this machine, I was like, wow, this is so cool. This is incredible. I was like, like because I've been dealing with this my whole life, sweaty palms, sweaty feet. And I bought this machine and it, and it fixed it. You know, my, my hands don't, don't, don't sweat as much as they used to anymore. Only if it's like really, really hot, will my hands start sweating. Now like they're, they're, they're dry. They're just dry and, 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 and normal because of this machine. And, and uh, it was, you know, one of the biggest discoveries I've ever made is that I can, you know, have this machine to, to, to kind of fix that. And, and so, yeah, I'll have my, I'll have a, a separate video on that too, because I want to like, because some, I think it's like, it affects like 1% of the population, uh, one, one to 1 1.5% of the population. So the little thing called hyperhidrosis, like it just means you sweat profusely from your hands and the bottom of your feet and it's just unstoppable like you can't stop it like it's just it's just that's just the way it is you have more sweat glands or whatever it is like I don't know the science behind it but um, I'm gonna make a video about that I'm gonna show you guys this machine so if you are going through that or if you know somebody that has sweaty palms or sweaty feet um, you can re recommend them this machine because like it, it worked for me I don't know I read reviews about it. Some people were saying it doesn't work for them and stuff like that. It just completely worked for me. It's been like pure magic, to be honest. And the third thing um, is balding. You know, I'm slowly, you know, starting to lose my hair uh, in the front and in the crown. It's hard to tell, you know, in video. I'll give you guys a little more insight on it now. If you guys can see what's going on up here, you know, my hair is basically just thinning out in a pretty big way. And then the crown as well, it's um, it's thinning in a way where you definitely can't see the extent of it in this video. Even when I kind of like just mess with my hair, you can't see exactly how much is thinning, but you, you kind of can. It's just, yeah, it's thinning, you know, towards the top, towards here, just every, everywhere on top. So we're starting to thin there. And this is the one where I, I, I don't really have, you know, a, a solution to as of right now. I mean, like you can get hair transplant surgery in the future. Um, that's what I'm gonna be looking to do. But yeah, the, the main point of this video is that if you have an insecurity in your life, okay? If you have something that you're insecure about, if you can do something about it, do the research and do it. But if you can't, like right now, I, I can't do anything about my bowling head as of right now until I do get surgery. You have to just accept that and not resist it, be okay with it, okay? Like for example, something you wouldn't be able to change. Like if you're, if you're watching this video and you're short and that's like an insecurity you have, that's something you're gonna have to learn to accept, okay? Uh, so some of the insecurities, if you're not able to change it, you have to fully accept it and be okay with it Otherwise, it's, you're, it's always gonna be an insecurity unless you actually own it. And you're like, you know, this is it. Like if you can step out and talk about it and be open with it and not try to hide it or resist it or avoid it, then it's just not even an insecurity anymore. You know, it's just, it's just something that you've accepted about yourself. And um, so if you have some insecurities uh, and when you're watching this video, the one thing I do hope is that you feel better about them 
where you can look at your own insecurities and be like, uh, you know, maybe mine's not that bad. Or, 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 or even, even if it is like in your mind, if it's bad, it's really not that much of a big deal if you really think about the grand scheme of things. And like, it's just like, cause a lot of times we make things a big deal in our own minds and then to other people, they don't really care, you know? So that's really what I'm trying to uh, mainly portray in this video. So if you care, then the person near you is gonna care as well. If you see it as like a massive insecurity, then the person near you is gonna feel that as well. But if you're if you have like insecurity, you laugh about it. Like, you know, when I think about my thinning hair, I just laugh about it. It's funny to me, like that I'm losing my hair. I, 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 I literally just don't really care that much because it's not under my control. If, if, if the hair is all gonna go, then it's all gonna go, you know? It is what it is. I'm still gonna be Jack. I'm not gonna, you know, change who I am as a human. I just won't have hair, you know? And some of you guys are, oh my God, no, the res resistance towards hearing that, like, no, I can't lose my hair. If you're gonna lose it, you're gonna lose it. You gotta, you're gonna lose it and be happy or you're gonna lose it and be miserable, but you're gonna lose it. It's going. If it's gonna go, it's gonna go. That's the thing with hair, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, stop it. You just can't, you know, if, if, it, wants to, if it wants to leave from your head, it's gonna leave from your head and, and you're gonna have to live with it. So um, that's the main point I wanna get across, you know? Uh, so if you do have an insecurity, do everything you can to find a solution for it if there's absolutely no solution, then learn to accept it and embrace it, laugh about it, joke about it, be cool with it, befriend it, and uh, just let it be a part of you, you know, own it, own it with your soul. And uh, that's that. And uh, if you guys have any insecurities you wanna share with me or you wanna publicly share, go ahead and do that. And uh, if you guys have any comments or any thoughts at all, uh, then, uh, I'd love to hear them as well, but um, yeah, I guess that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.